Hello, my name is Paul Rosenberg. I'm an author and practicing endodontist, and I am a professor in the Department of Endodontics at New York University College of Dentistry. Recently, I wrote a book titled Endodontic Pain. It reviews the causes, diagnosis, prevention, and management of endodontic pain. In this segment of our series on pain, I will discuss a frustrating situation that is experienced by all clinicians doing endodontics, persistent pain following seemingly successful endodontic treatment. Who is most likely to experience post-operative pain? Research has shown that the most significant risk factor for post-operative pain is the presence of preoperative pain. Patients with chronic pain conditions are at a particular risk of post-operative pain. There are significant variables also associated with the problem of persistent pain. These are significant variables for you to look for. Preoperative pain persisting for more than three months. That is considered a warning sign because of the long period that the patient is in pain and the effect of that on nerves in the area of the tooth. Previous chronic pain problems, and that makes a patient four times more likely than the patient without that history. It's also interesting to note that those chronic pain problems are not necessarily limited to the mouth. They can be non-oral conditions. It is the chronicity of a patient in pain that is an indicator of future endodontic problems. Interappointment pain is another indicator, especially if they are repeated. Gender is an important factor. It's been shown that women are almost four times more likely to develop chronic pain after root canal treatment than are men. There have been many assumptions about the reason for this. Some have to do with the possibility of estrogen and other hormones in female patients. Preoperative tenderness to percussion has been listed as a variable, but frankly, it's a bit confusing because it is present in many patients who never suffer the complication we're talking about. These are some of the possible causes of persistent pain. An untreated canal or a failed occlusal seal allowing microbial penetration back into the canal space. A tooth fracture may have existed but not been detected. Pain from an adjacent tooth that may not have been diagnosed previously. Nonodontogenic referred pain poses a serious problem and we'll talk about that a bit more. Deafferentation refers to nerves firing off even when they are not directly stimulated. Nonodontogenic pain is not an uncommon outcome after root canal treatment and may represent half of all cases of persistent tooth pain. Findings have implications for the diagnosis and treatment of persistent pain following root canal treatment. Non-odontogenic factors must be considered. I'd like to go through a case with you and we can discuss it and determine the best way to approach it. This patient presented with a seemingly uncomplicated situation, which was preoperative pain associated with tooth number 30. Here we see on the right, the tooth was completed November 2013 and the patient came back with a complaint of continuing pain. Here you see the retreatment of the tooth in January 2014. And to our eyes, I think it's fair to say that root canal treatment looks well done. Unfortunately, three months following that retreatment, the pain continued. The question I have for you is, what would you do at this point? Here are the reasonable options. Retreat the case again. Well, I don't think that's too tempting, nor is it probably going to be beneficial for the patient. In fact, a negative outcome would be to enlarge the canals even further, thus weakening the tooth itself. Apical surgery. 
But what would we be operating on? As you might have noticed, there was no periapical lesion associated with either the distal or mesial root. Would you operate on both, or would you take a guess? I don't think any of us would be comfortable operating on that tooth with the absence of causation. And the last choice is to consult a neurologist or an oral facial pain specialist to consider that possibility that we mentioned a few moments ago, non-odonogenic pain. Why not extract? At times, the patient becomes so frustrated, as does the dentist, that extraction is awfully tempting. However, if that tooth is extracted, what will we do if the patient comes back and says, Doc, I'm still having the same pain after the tooth has been extracted? Perhaps the most important take-home message is that all pain before and after root canal therapy may not be due to a pulp or periapical problem or treatment shortcoming. The possibility of non-odontogenic pain masquerading as endodontic pain must be ruled out before numerous retreatments, apical surgery, or extraction of the problem tooth. And remember, referral to an oral pain specialist or neurologist is always a valid option. I hope that this brief discussion of persistent pain following seemingly successful endodontics is useful in your practices. Thank you and good luck.